Now, science is good at some things. It's, science is really good at certain things. Asking when, where, what, how many, and by what means. Now, science can answer why questions, but not ultimate why questions. So we can ask why, but when we say why, what we mean is how, really, not why. If you ask the scientists why, they'll say this, and they say, well, why that? And they'll say this, and you say, why that? And then they'll kind of go, you know, that's, not, that's outside my area. God, maybe. But here are some questions that, that naturalism doesn't help with at all. And my, what I would say is, these are the questions that people actually want answered. So naturalism leaves us without any answers to anything we care about. I, again, I'm not against science. I, you know, if it weren't for science, I, I wouldn't, I would, it would have taken me a lot longer to get here from California. Why am I here? I think people want to know the answer to that question. Is that the right thing to do? Don't you want to know if it's the right thing to do? Naturalism says, what, what kind of question is that? How valuable am I? Well, I, I don't know, as a chemist, uh, I don't know, $2.36. Let's add up, you know, the sodium, the chlorine, you know, the, I don't know. <laughs> Does God exist? Will God respond if I pray? Do, do supernatural events happen? People say, well, according to science, supernatural events don't happen. How can science decide that? That doesn't even make any sense. If the materials is right, then religious thought is nonsense. And prayer is just chemicals moving around in your brain. Art and literature, they have no value. Justice? Justice. And all of us have a sense that that's not right, right? That's not right. According to naturalism, what do you mean? I mean, if naturalism is right, you have purpose. Your purpose is to pass your genes on. In fact, you know what? If you stop some other people from passing their genes on, but you pass yours along, that might be a good thing. And you can see some implications there. By the way, I, I, have, some, I have a lot of atheist friends. I, I co-teach with a guy who's an atheist, an agnostic guy, and he's one of the nicest. This guy is, he is so incredibly nice. He's one of my favorite people. But if that's your philosophy, I just wonder how you sustain some of those things. Human rights. What's the basis for human rights? We hold these truths to be self-evident. Oh, really? Really? All men were created equal? Not according to naturalism. If the naturalist is right, then good and evil are meaningless ideas. What's wrong with stealing? Any kind of sexual behavior is as good as any other, etc. Postmodernism. I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. And, and by the way... I, I think postmodernism has helped us humans in some ways. Postmodernism has given us a, a sense of history. And, and it's taught us Westerners to realize that maybe there's other ways of thinking. Postmodernism has helped us to accept other ideas. You know, so, but postmodernism is a philosophy to answer the big questions, you know? These questions... See, postmodernism leaves us completely empty in, in our attempts to answer the big questions. Because according to postmodernism, I don't know. Uh, it, it's right for you, but it's not right for me. So if we want to find meaning, if we want to find truth, the postmodernist post says there is no truth. You know, there is no evil. How do we solve the problem of evil? By denying that it exists? I don't think denying something's existence really helps solve that problem. So according to postmodernism, it's true for you, but it's not true for me. Meaning, if it exists, is created by those that believe it. In other words, if enough people believe in it, then by definition, it's true. All right? Now, I have a challenge to the postmodernist. All right? We got a bunch of people that don't believe in gravity. I mean, in our belief system, gravity is not real. I mean, it is not real. I'd, I'd like to challenge you to go to the top of a tall building and check out your belief there. I, I think some things are true. Now, to me, either God exists or God does not. But our opinion doesn't affect the existence of God. Some things are just true. This philosophical system, in the end, as a means to guide your life by, is bogus. No rational way to discover what is the best worldview. So how do you decide what's right? What's wrong with Nazism? I mean, you could say, I don't agree with that, but how can you, uh, you know, say it's bad, given that so many people like that idea? 
If postmodernism is so true, then how do they know since you can't know anything is true if you're postmodernist? But that's a uh, story. Now, I want to think about Christian philosophy just for a little while. Just, this is just giving you a flavor for it, okay? What, what has been the impact of the world of Christian thinking and Christian philosophy? Well, I'd say women's rights. The source of women's rights came from Christian thinking. Human rights. The abolition of slavery. Wilberforce. Wilberforce, a, a British uh, um, politician who brought about the abolition of slavery and through, through his influence, ultimately, the abolition of slavery everywhere. It came from Christianity. Science. If it were not for Christian theology, there would be no science. That's true both rationally and from history. Because what is science based on? Well, science is based on a few presuppositions. I teach a philosophy of science course. This is lecture number one, first day in my philosophy of science course. The scientific view is based on the assumption that the universe follows a single set of unvarying law, uh, physical laws. Where did that idea come from? Mo monotheism. Roger Bacon and other, others were looking at the world, using their Christian philosophy and saying, there's surely there's, it's not chaotic. It's not a bunch of gods fighting it out. It's one God who is unchanging. Therefore, there are unchanging laws in the universe. And using Christian theology, they reasoned that the universe is not only predictable, not only does it follow unchanging laws, but it should be understandable. Why? Because God created the universe so we could know him. And he created the universe so we should be able to understand the universe. That's the second important presupposition of science. It's interesting. Uh, now, Christian philosophy says the world is real. So we agree with the naturalists there. The world is real, but it's not all there is. According to Christian theology, there is something higher. There's soul, there's spirit. God said in Genesis 1.31 that it's good. Eastern philosophy says this world is bad. Eastern philosophy says that evil is an illusion. Christian philosophy says the physical world is real. Thank you very much. And it says, yes, there is evil. H how does naturalism solve the problem of evil? By saying it doesn't exist. How does, how does postmodernism solve the problem of evil? By saying, well, you think it's evil, but they don't, and how do you know, how do you know you're right? That doesn't really help me very much. You know, I, I believe that Genesis chapter 1 through 3 is the most amazing little piece of philosophy ever written. Just Genesis 1, 1 alone. If Genesis 1, 1 is true, then pantheism is wrong, atheism is wrong, dualism is wrong, materialism is wrong, humanism is wrong, animism is wrong, naturalism is wrong, and postmodernism is also wrong as a big philosophy. And, and one little statement, that's, that's pretty amazing. I find scientific wisdom and philosophical wisdom. Biblical theology solves the problem of suffering and evil. Why is there evil? Because God gave us a choice, because he loved us. Because he loved us, he gave us a choice, and we rebelled. Well, how do we solve the problem of evil? Christian philosophy solves that as well. God sent a savior. Suffering's not evil. The world is good. Why is there suffering in the world? Principally because people rebelled against God. All right, number three. Christianity is historically fraudulent. I, I hear this all the time, and, and people, you know, you, you, you get around, uh, especially professors and stuff like that, <laughs> you know, the Bible. Uh, some good friends of mine are taking a, a, a class at San Diego State, they're freshmen, and it's on uh, a journey through the Bible, and this guy feels like it's his job to destroy their faith in Christianity and the Bible. That, that, that takes that on as a personal project, I guess. People say, oh, the Bible's historically fraudulent, and I, I want to talk about that. 